What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down some of Devontae Adams' route running and why he is the best route runner in the NFL. So I hope this video helps you guys out. hope it could teach you a few new things, but also, fellas, if you would like to get faster and you want to improve your speed, your explosiveness, check out that very first link in the description below where you can get access to 50 plus speed drills to improve your overall agility, athleticism, speed, the works. We break down every single drill at the exact sets and reps, and we also include speed gym and on-field workout schedules to follow, exact sets and reps, everything for you. So check out that very first link in the description below if you would like to get faster. Let's get started with this video. So this first example here from Devontae Adams is him running a slant route. And I think he's got one of the nastiest slant routes in the game. He has so many different ways to run the slant, and this is just one of them. So when you guys come up to the line of scrimmage as a wide receiver, you guys want to identify three specific things with the DB, and that's how you come up with your plan. There are interviews out there of Devontae Adams talking about when he comes up to the line, he identifies the DB, what's he's doing. He's got his Terminator mask on, like he says, and he picks a release to use. So this DB is lined up outside leverage, right? Probably because Adams has a reduced split. So what that means is he's lined up very very close to the lineman, close to like the right tackle in this case. And this DB has got maybe about two to three yards of space from him because he is off the ball. So let's look at what he does here. So he closes the space of the DB, gives a move, takes that inside release and is able to win on that slant or maybe even consider it a quick post. So let's talk about why he does that. So when this DB is outside leverage and you have to run an inside breaking route, the easy thing that a lot of wide receivers make the mistake of is, oh, I'm just going to take off and go run to the inside. But when a DB is lined up outside leverage, he will never play man-to-man coverage outside shade without some kind of help to the inside. Now, I know this is one-on-ones, but when you guys train one-on-ones, you guys are training in the off-season, you got to treat everything like a game. So a game-realistic route, if you just run away from him, you're running right into the safety help. That does us no good. So what we have to do is we have to attack this DB to the outside. Now, a lot of receivers will make the mistake of just taking one step, they'll attack to the outside, then they try to go to the inside. When you leave an amount of space between you and the DB, and let's say we get him to jump to the outside, your break point is still maybe at what five yards but if you leave a yard of gap or two yards of space between you and the db yeah we get him to jump but you still got to get to five yards and he could cut you off to the angle because we didn't close the space and we didn't step on his toes so you see when adams comes off the ball he takes this one step off the ball but you see this db starts to inch back he doesn't stop the release he doesn't just try to force the inside route he continues to attack he continues to attack the toes of the db so when he makes this move and he makes a miss to the outside it's easy for him to get get skinny. What does getting skinny mean? That essentially means getting vertical and trying to go hip to hip with the DB. So we can't cut off the angle, but he can't, he can cut off the angle if we don't close the space. So it's a combination of both. We got to close the space. We got to get skinny and burst up to the depth of the route. So this DB cannot recover and he cannot react. But again, that all comes down to that terminator mask. If you will, when you come up to the line of scrimmage and you see the DB's leverage and you see the distance, that's how we pick the release. Let's say this DB was lined up right up on the line of scrimmage right in his face. Do you think he would need to close the space like that? No, he would probably just take one quick jab to the outside, hold his leverage, and then get skinny that way. No matter where the DB is, we have to bring the line of scrimmage to him. He's two to three yards away. We got to bring that line of scrimmage up two to three yards. He's right up on the line of scrimmage. I just got to make him miss. I don't got to bring the line of scrimmage anywhere because he closed the gap for me. So let's play this thing again full speed one more time. Great job, Adams. Closing the space, taking that inside release, and winning on that slant. So now, what a lot of the best route runners do in the NFL and what Devontae Adams does, and you see it time and time again, is that they have a high football route running IQ, right? And that's something that we spend a lot of times with our wide receivers on trying to explain to them different leverages, different coverages, why DBs play a certain way, and the best ways to go about beating that specific look. So Adams is going to be running like this 12 to 15 yard dig route or in route, if you will, versus this inside shade press coverage DB. So when we come up to the line of scrimmage again, how we pick my release, how we structure the route is all based on the DB. It is not based on the route. A lot of people think that because you are running a post because you are running a dig or because you're running a fade or an out route, you have to release to the side of the route. So if you're running a dig, you have to take an inside release. That's incorrect. The release that you choose is based on the DB and how he plays it. And we're going to talk about why. So let's watch how Adams runs this route. He attacks the DB, takes the outside release, gives a move, and then runs his inside breaking route. He doesn't force the inside release because spacing and timing are important in a real actual football scenario. Football is not one-on-one. You see it all the time at these camps.
camps, at these showcases. Wide receivers run their routes, and they'll end up running a dig, but they catch the ball on the opposite hash. That is the most unrealistic thing that you can do. In a real game, there are other defenders on the field, and there are other routes on the field. And you have to keep things realistic, and you got to keep spacing. So you got to take what the DB gives you. If he's inside leverage, he's playing there for a reason. He's playing inside shade to take away the inside route. He does not want us to run a dig or a slant or a post. He wants to force us to his help to the outside. Just like that outside leverage look, remember he had help inside. That's the safety, a linebacker. A DB's help when he's inside shade is the sideline. He wants to force us right to that sideline so we got no room for the QB. So as a wide receiver, if I try to just come up to the line, try to close the distance, maybe give him a fake outside, then go inside, this DB is going to do whatever possible to make sure that doesn't happen. Now, who's to say it might not work? Sometimes it might work, but going up against a talented and disciplined DB, it probably won't work. You force it, he gets hands. Even if you get off the ball, you're rerouted five six yards inside that's not good spacing one defender could probably cover two routes at that point and that is not good that also screws at the db's time with the quarterback's timing the whole goal of press the whole goal of the db getting hands on us is to disrupt timing so let's take what he gives us let's take the outside release and let's work to stack over the top of the db so what does stack mean stack means when you get to this position where this db is trailing your back hip Now, you're not always going to get to this position when you take the outside release. Sometimes this DB is going to be right on your hip. What you would do is at the break point, instead of giving him a fake to the outside, if this DB is right on your hip, you take your inside arm and you swat this DB's shoulder or swat his hip and you slip under him. They call it a throw-by move. You have to be able to react. You got to play fast and you have to be able to react fast at the wide receiver position. You got to plan off the line. We know how we want to execute, but at the end of the day, sometimes playing this receiver position is about reacting. But if we can restack him, that's even better. You stack him over the top, you get him trailing your back hip, and you could throw a fake to the outside. You sell with your hips. You sell with your shoulders. You step hard to the outside to get him to think outside breaking route because usually DBs are taught, DBs are literally taught this, that when a wide receiver takes an outside release, sometimes expect an outside, more often than not, expect an outside breaking route. So when you stack him and you give him that hard fake outside, he's already anticipating that because of the release we took, fellas. Guys, you got to understand It's all a mind game, and it's all about being efficient with your routes. If you can be efficient with your routes and keep things simple, you are going to win more often than not. You see, again, Adams, imagine if he got rerouted inside and was running this dig right next to this seam. That would not be a very good situation. Let's play this again full speed one more time. All the great receivers, fellas, have a very, very high route running IQ and can get separation against any leverage. They're comfortable taking any release versus any type of leverage. Okay, so now this next example here from Adams, again, he's notoriously known for that kind of like hesitation skip release where he hezzies off the line, gives a move, and then goes. And when a lot of wide receivers do that, a lot of DBs like to try wide receivers and get real physical off the line to disrupt that kind of like hezzy move. Now, this is a great example of him doing that type of move and not getting completely screwed off the line and jammed. So a lot of times wide receivers, when they do like a skip or they hesitate off the ball, the one thing they do is they stand straight up in the air with their pad level. They expose their number or expose their chest. This doesn't happen to Adams. He comes off the ball. This DB jams. He gets a pretty good hand on him, but Adams is able to get off the press easily because when he does his release, he maintains a good pad level position. So again, guys, you got to understand that when a DB lunges at us, he has no base. His feet aren't moving. His feet are outside of his frame. So all it takes is just a simple swat of his hands. And you're off the press because he has no base. When a DB lunges at you, he has no base. So when you come off that ball to make sure that we don't get just punked and embarrassed off the ball, you see how Adams, when he goes here, his base is wide. He's in a strong position with his legs. He's got a knee bend. He has a slight forward lean with his pad level. Because at the end of the day, fellas, a DB has no idea where we are going. So if we can maintain some kind of forward lean, we could get our momentum going forward. When he shoots hands and I fight those hands, I have the advantage. At the end of the day, I just need to be able to get off the ball with that press release. So fellas, whatever release you decide to choose, if you're going up against a physical DB, you have to stay low and explosive. Something I tell my wide receivers is that like, I don't personally like how tall Adam started right here. This is not, and again, I'm not saying this is wrong. I'm just saying that this is not something I would tell my wide receivers to line up like. I wouldn't tell a high school kid, hey, stand straight up tall off the line of scrimmage. You're going to be fine. Like, I love that Adams is relaxed and you should be relaxed as a receiver. And if I was coaching him, I obviously wouldn't tell him to correct this. But at the end of the day, I would like you to be in a more low explosive position. So when we come off the release, we don't have to like 
start high and get low, we can just stay low. I tell my wide receivers with their releases, you want to pretend there's a small door over the top of your head. And if you pop up, you're going to hit your head on the door or like a doorway, if you will. You want to stay low, stay explosive for this specific reason. Now, one other thing I want to talk about, because I wouldn't be doing this video justice if I didn't talk about his hands. And I think his hands and over-the-shoulder catches are some of the most underrated and not talked about aspects of his game that more people should talk about. Because when you guys are in man-to-man -man coverage and you got a DB on your hip, it is on you if he gets a PBU, in my opinion. I think the only time a wide receiver should ever get the ball knocked out is if it's just a perfect timed guess by a DB. And so a lot of wide receivers, when that ball is thrown over the shoulder, they show their hands. They put their hands up high and they go to the ball. I call it early hands. You don't want early hands. You want late hands. When that ball is thrown over the top, I want this DB to have no idea where the ball is. I want my hands to be as late as possible. Do you need him to be as late as Devontae Adams here? No. And again, he's grabbing hold. Somebody's grabbing his hand. That's why it's important to work on one-handed catches sometimes because you never know when a DB will be grabbing you. But you want to be as late as possible with your hands. You don't want to let that DB know where the ball is coming because the DB, like him running with his head back like this, is a sole result of Adams not showing the hands. Right, showing the hands, waiting to the last possible second, waiting till the ball's coming down to show those hands and make that catch. If he's running and he starts showing his hands early, that DB knows exactly where to punch his arms through when that ball makes contact. We want to give him the as late of notice as possible so I could, one, keep running full speed and catch up to the ball if it's thrown far because I'm not running with my hands out like so many receivers do. And also, DB has no idea where the ball is. And that's an underrated aspect of his game. Everybody talks about his releases. Everybody talks about his routes, but not enough people talk Talk about his hands and how he is so consistent when he's got this DB by a step because of how late he is. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you would like to get faster and get access to 50 plus speed drills and speed workouts with the exact sets and reps all mapped out for you, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to get you on that, fellas. I'll see you guys next time.